Bueno, eh, el año 98, ¿no? Eh, por primera vez tuvimos la suerte en Rapanui de conocer una persona que se interesó por nuestro problema. El problema nuestro en ese momento, hasta el día de hoy, es el problema de la enfermedad del caballo loco. 2300 miles from the coast of South America, Easter Island is the most remote inhabited island on Earth. Easter Island, also known as Rapa Nui, is the only Polynesian island to be annexed by Chile. With the arrival of missionaries in the late 1800s, horses and other European livestock were introduced to the island and quickly became an important part of Rapa Nui culture. Today, approximately 4,000 people inhabit Rapa Nui, along with thousands of horses and cows. Rapa Nui hoy día tiene mucho auto, mucho transporte, de cuatro ruedas, de dos ruedas. Los caballos no servían y no sirven de transporte para acarrear carga, para arar, para plantar, para limpiar nuestro terreno, porque antes no existía tractor en Isla de Pascua. Por tanto, es toda una vida lo que nosotros tenemos con los caballos. Difícilmente nosotros podemos dejar los caballos porque es parte de nuestra cultura. Bueno, Jonathan llegó a Isla de Pascua, vio nuestro problema y él no venía a ver nuestro problema, venía por otro tipo de trabajo. ¿no? Nos encontramos de que él se interesó por el tema. Bueno, justo en ese tiempo yo tenía un caballo, era un potro muy bueno, era un potro de trabajo, era para arar, ¿no? Estaba enfermo ya cuando Jonathan llegó a Isla de Pascua. Yo personalmente no sabía por qué, porque no tenía idea. Jonathan Arts first came to Rapa Nui in 1998. He had been working on mainland Chile as part of his veterinary training and decided to take a vacation on the island. He had always been interested in archaeological artifacts and exploring ancient cultures, and he could get a flight to the island from Santiago. Shortly after arriving on Easter Island, I noticed that there were a vast quantity of cattle and horses on the island and scarce resources to support those animals. I also began to notice that the condition of the animals was markedly poor. They were severely emaciated and debilitated with, with various conditions. I began to talk to the locals about the condition of the animals. In particular, I was interested in finding out their opinions about this neurologic dysfunction that I was noticing in the horses and cattle. And they told me that it was something that they were aware of that had been going on for about 20 years on the island. And they referred to this syndrome as vaca loca or caballo loco. Translation would be mad cow disease or mad horse disease. It was only natural for me to begin asking the owners of the animals what was going on and what they knew about this syndrome. And in the course of talking with, with several owners, I found one, Hotu Araki Tapano, who had a horse which at that time was in the late stages of this syndrome that really had, had marked severe debilitation. Yo pedí a Jonathan matar el animal para que él pudiera llevar la muestra a los Estados Unidos, ya que en nuestro país, en Chile, 
jamás, hasta el día de hoy día, hace cinco años atrás, ha tenido la voluntad. Hotu's horse was in very poor condition and was suffering tremendously. John euthanized the horse and performed a necropsy. He examined the organs and it was immediately apparent there was a problem with the liver and abnormal amounts of yellow fluid in the body cavity. He collected samples to bring back to the university to examine microscopically. Overwhelmed, exhausted, and running out of time, John used his last moments on the island to collect samples of water and plants. The most important information in this investigation came pretty quickly after John got back to the university. The liver of this afflicted horse had enlarged cells and abundant scar tissue, or fibrosis. These lesions are very typical for poisoning caused by a class of chemicals contained in plants we have in the U.S. and which occur in various places throughout the world. With the samples I brought back from Rapa Nui, I was in fact able to prove that the Caballo Loco syndrome was caused by the plant Chocho. The samples of livers from affected animals had a type of lesion that's very characteristic for this type of plant poisoning. And one of the plants that I brought back had high concentrations of pyrrolizinine alkaloids. That plant, which on Rapa Nui is known as Chocho, in fact is scientifically known as Crotillaria grahamiana and belongs to a genus of plants which are known to produce these toxins. So when an animal eats chocho, the pyrrolizidine alkaloids from the plant pass from the gut into the blood. They go straight to the liver. In the liver, the cells of the liver change the alkaloid into another chemical called a pyrrole. That pyrrole poisons the cells of the liver. It either kills them immediately or it changes them to such an extent that they can no longer function. What we're looking at here is two specimens of liver from normal healthy horses which are off brown to mahogany in color and largely homogeneous. By comparison, we have two specimens of liver from chocho pyrrolizidine alkaloid intoxicated horses from Rapa Nui. One of the liver's normal important functions is to act as a filter for the blood to pull toxins such as ammonia and mercaptans and various other classes of toxic chemicals out of the blood. As the liver begins to fail in these chocho intoxicated animals, the liver can no longer perform that function. The toxins pass from the blood to the brain and thus alter the brain function causing the drunkenness, incoordination, sleepiness that we see in the chocho intoxicated animals. There is no cure for this disease. The problem is that once the animals have the neurologic dysfunction, the liver is already completely scarred and there's no longer any capacity to regenerate. Equipped with veterinary supplies and information on Caballo Loco, Dr. Jonathan Arzt is welcomed back to the island to further investigate this devastating syndrome. We're here within the plaza of Ahu Tangariki, and the presence of these horses within the plaza is central to the conflict that exists between the National Park Service, which manages these archaeologic sites, the owners of the animals who choose to let their animals range freely, the politicians, and the tourism industry, which depends so heavily on the flow of tourists that come to see these precious archaeologic sites.
Chocho es un lupino que vulgarmente se llama Chocho, lupino silvestre, que fue introducido a la isla con un propósito, cual es eh, la, la que es atacar la erosión. Eh, puntualmente fue una institución eh, vinculada al Estado y hacia un ministerio que es el Ministerio de Agricultura y esta es CONAF. CONAF está encargado de los parques nacionales y aquí en la isla del parque que es el patrimonio arqueológico Rapanui. As with most introduced species, no one anticipated the problems Chocho would cause on Rapa Nui. Since Chocho was introduced in the early 80s, it has spread all over the island. It spreads quickly and invests every bit of uncultivated soil. It is incredibly tenacious and difficult to eradicate. Chocho is taking over archaeological sites. The green plant in these areas attracts grazing animals, and often you will find sick and dying horses at the archaeological plazas. The horses are allowed to roam freely by their owners because they are not able to keep their animals confined. They just don't have the ability to provide drinking water and feed in a confined pasture. Roaming livestock was never a problem on Rapa Nui until Chocho was introduced. The fact that the animals are allowed to roam freely for extensive portions of their life, combined with the fact that the plant is basically ubiquitous, all parts of the island, creates a situation in which the animals are constantly exposed to this toxic plant. Chocho stays green and contains water at times when everything around it is dry and barren. This is why the horses continue to eat the chocho, even though it is unpalatable and undesirable as a food source. This horse is very typical for the advanced stages of the Chocho syndrome. You can see the somnolent, sleepy appearance just when the horse is standing still. His eyes slowly close and appears to not have the energy to keep his head up. You can also see that there's some loss of body condition, some prominence of the ribs. As I put a little bit of weight onto this horse, he might just fall right over. This particular horse is in a more acute, more rapid phase of the syndrome than many of the other horses that I've seen. There's no question in my mind that this horse is suffering from the chocho intoxication. It's really disturbing to think that all over this island, all year long, horses are going through this and most of them just have to live out this life in this state of compromise until they just fall over, go into a coma and die. It's really an awful, awful thought. And honestly, I think it's an important service that we can provide in, in euthanizing animals when they're in this state of suffering. Dr. Arts realized that determining what was causing the widespread suffering of the animals was only the first step in trying to solve the problem. In order to really make a difference, he would have to find a means of support. It was at that point, while still in veterinary school, John created a nonprofit organization dedicated to promoting global veterinary care. I created Veterinary Relief International specifically to do projects like I'm doing here on Easter Island to be able to help people with veterinary problems when they have no other recourse, no other means to receive the veterinary services that VRI provides. The various VRI projects in many places in the world are entirely dependent on individuals with interest in improving animal welfare in the developing world. For the first time this year, Veterinary Relief International brought a team of American veterinary surgeons to Rapa Nui to do a spay-neuter clinic. The clinic was a great success. We spayed and neutered nearly a hundred animals, which is wonderful for the first time conducting such a service in a new place. <laughs> Progress has come from the herd health programs John has developed with the owners. They deworm the animals regularly and provide vitamin supplements as necessary. Additionally, he has started to encourage population control. The goal of all of this is to foster the notion that it is better to have a smaller herd of healthy animals than having a huge herd of debilitated and emaciated animals. El Estado de Chile jamás, nunca, ha tomado parte en este trabajo que este americano gringo 
ha hecho por el pueblo de Rapanui. Y gracias a él hemos tenido la suerte hoy día de empezar ya a controlar nuestros animales en el sentido de que él viene a la Isla de Pascua una vez al año, por tres semanas, por un mes, viene a trabajar en la investigación de la enfermedad de los caballos y de los vacunos, nos traen remedio en forma gratuita, nos desparasitan todos los animales, y él trae, trae su remedio de los Estados Unidos, todo, jamás ha cobrado un peso de los cinco años en Rapanui a la gente que tiene animal. Todo ha sido gratuito. Por tanto, nosotros los Rapanui estamos muy conformes, partiendo desde el gobernador hasta el último Rapanui, estamos muy y sumamente de acuerdo y agradecidos con este tipo de trabajo que nos hace sin interés monetario alguno. Ay poco poco eres taca taca era e cano ta ui ki te ni matoki Ay poco poco eres taca taca era e cano ta ui ki te ni matoki So we've just been called out in the middle of the night to see this horse, which has been reported to us, has been down on the ground for at least 10 hours. No one knows what happened to this horse. There's no evidence of trauma. Um, one possibility is that it was hit by a car, but we don't, we don't see any evidence of that. There's really not much that we can tell from, from what we see right here, other than the horse is severely debilitated. Given the limitations of, of practice on Rapa Nui, there's really no choice for this horse other than to euthanize it. Once we euthanize the horse and end its suffering, we will do a necropsy. So we saw pleural and peritoneal effusions, which means um, free fluid in the abdomen and thoracic cavities. Uh, the liver so far appears relatively normal. Um, the presence of those fluids in the, in the body cavities does suggest liver failure, there are, though there are some other explanations. Given the, what we know about the syndrome in the horses here, the presence of that fluid is highly suggestive that this is the effect of the chocho poisoning syndrome that we've seen in so many horses here. Coming here, I didn't know what to expect, how the people would receive me and I think it's been of great value and benefit to me to have John here with me introducing me to the people because over the five six years that he's been coming here um, he's developed a rapport with these people he's their friend he's he's the gringo he's the guy that comes and takes care of their animals for free and and cares about the people here and I, the people know that and consider him a friend this island is a wonderful enchanting place in so many ways and you look at a herd of horses like this and it's just awesome to be able to see horses living in a natural environment, but the situation with the chocho is incredibly difficult to deal with and is unlikely to go away in the near future. Therefore, every time I see a group of animals like this behind me, which appear to be relatively healthy, well-fed, well-watered horses, I look at them and I know that 16% of those healthy looking horses are gonna die this year from the Chocho syndrome. This year I've been fortunate in that I've been able to collect more samples from cattle affected with the Chocho syndrome than in any other year. And my hope is that these samples, when I analyze them microscopically, will give me some answers as to how rapidly this disease actually progresses in the cattle, what it causes on the microscopic level if it is similar or dissimilar from what it causes in the horses. In most places in the world where pyrrolizidine alkaloid poisoning occurs, 
horses and cattle are typically similarly susceptible to the disease. For some reason on Rapa Nui, the cattle have a greater resistance to the chocho intoxication relative to the horses. Horses have a simple, single chambered stomach, similar to that of a human. Cattle have an advantage in that they have a four chambered stomach, which acts as a huge fermentation vat full of microbes which digest and alter the chemicals they have ingested. For this reason, cattle may have a greater resistance to this type of toxin. The toxins affect them at a slower rate than the horses, taking years to manifest as an obvious illness. The horses get sick and they suffer. It's a terrible, devastating thing to see. But the syndrome in the cattle has a whole other ramification. There is the possibility that everyone on Rapa Nui is consuming toxic alkaloids that are present in the meat of the cows grazing on the plant chocho. Gaining a better understanding of what is going on with the cattle of Rapa Nui in regard to the chocho syndrome is of utmost importance. The same toxins that are killing the animals will kill people if ingested in sufficient quantities. What Dr. Arts is trying to figure out is if there's the risk of a secondary effect from a human consuming an animal that consumed the toxic plant. John's approach to the problem is to concentrate on collecting liver samples from what appear to be healthy cows that are being processed for human consumption. Here we are looking at a sample of liver from a slaughterhouse cow and it is clear that the same megalocytosis and fibrosis are present as seen in the affected horses, thus indicating that the cattle are suffering from the same syndrome. The next step of assessing the potential risk to humans from consuming the beef from these animals is complicated. The cow's rapid metabolism of the alkaloids to pyrroles occurs so rapidly that they essentially disappear immediately by binding to DNA and proteins within the cells of the liver. So while it is relatively easy to identify pyrrolisinine alkaloids within a toxic plant such as chocho, it is currently impossible to search for these pyrroles within the beef. The fact that I now have evidence that half of the cattle on the island have some stage of the chocho intoxication is of great concern for human public health. It is not so straightforward that I can say that half of these cattle are a true risk to the human inhabitants, but it is significant enough to advise the people not to eat the livers of these animals because the livers have the greatest concentration of these chemicals. The goal of the next stage of this investigation is to try to determine if there's any risk to the inhabitants of the island from consumption of the meat of these cattle. Progress has come on many levels in Rapa Nui. First and foremost, they now understand what is causing the syndrome of wasting an ultimate death in large numbers of horses and cattle on the island. Progress is also being made with the toxic plant. The owners now understand that confining the animals is the only way to prevent the disease in the short term, and they are seeing decreased numbers of cases. I've informed various branches of the Chilean government, both here on Rapa Nui as well as on the continent, regarding my findings of the severe, devastating problem in the livestock that derives from eating the poisonous plant chocho, and to my knowledge, no one has exerted any effort to initiate a plan to eradicate chocho from Rapa Nui. Rapa Nui serves a purpose for the Chilean government in that it brings tremendous numbers of tourists into the country to spend tremendous quantities of money. That money coming in is in no way dependent upon the welfare or health status of the animals on the island. The only complete solution to this problem is to eradicate chocho from Rapa Nui. Until the government is willing to commit to that type of project, the only way to control this syndrome is to encourage the owners to confine their animals in the parcellas, eradicate the chocho regionally, and to provide supplemental feed and water to the animals in such a way that they do not need to roam the island in search of food and water and thus get exposed to the chocho. When you come to a place as wonderful and mystical as Rapa Nui, it's hard to feel like you really deserve to be here. But over the years, the relationships I've developed with the animals and the people and the changes that I've seen based on my work make me feel that, that my presence here is justified and 
that I do need to keep coming back, not just for my own benefit, but for the benefit of these animals and their owners. Oh, wow.